second. Well, we'll start. <coughs> Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for all the blessings you have showered upon us. We ask that you be with us during the study and open our hearts and minds to what you would have us learn today. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Amen. Well, seeing you've been gone so long, we're going to pick on you, uh, AJ, and have you read the first seven verses. My son, give attention to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding, that you may observe discretion, and your lips may reserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and smoother than oil is her speech. But in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold of shoal. She, is, she does not ponder the path of life. Her ways are unstable, she does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Okay. In late August 2023, what does that mean to AJ? So I'm guessing this is a, an adult giving advice to his son. Yeah. And so it means don't. Take, take my advice. Um, don't just disregard it. And Why would um, we want to take our parents' advice? Because they have more experience than we do. I'm going to let you in on a secret. All the stuff that you've ever tried to get away with, we you tried try. it and didn't get away with it when we were kids. We don't want you to get into trouble. Yeah. And go down the thorny path. Well. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, what are some of the adulteresses that we might run into in our lives? Greed. Huh? Greed. Maybe. Greed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is. How is greed a bad thing? Because it's the love of money and you're like replacing. Okay. It's not just money. The root of all evil. Yeah. But it isn't money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's mobile. <laughs> He wants to get closer to me over here. Over here. So, what else? Okay, so we have greed. Laziness. That's one. Okay, we're going to go down the seven deadly sins, are we? Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. I mean, the, the seven deadly sins are, are presented to us. Um. I'll give you th things you, you may run into in the very near future if you haven't already. What does it matter if two people love each other as long as they love each other? What's that sound like? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's only love. You know, that should be okay. Your heart can deceive you. Well, you get, if you don't agree with me, you're a bigot. You're going to get a lot of that. If you don't hold my beliefs, whatever the, you know, this person is, if you don't hold my beliefs, you're a homophobic or transphobic, you're a racist, you're this, you're that. And they will badger you into trying to accept their viewpoint. Now, I'm also going to tell you some of your teachers may, may do that as well. What you do is you know, just 
keep them happy, get your grade, but know that what they're doing is they're trying to change your worldview to theirs. So Missy, you're awfully quiet. How does this apply to Missy? Oh my gosh, why did he call on me? <laughs> I was playing like level 600 with roadblocks. Yeah, Road now I'm back to ground zero. <laughs> mm, out of what I can say, listen to the wisdom of your parents. Okay, so <laughs> parents are wise? Are all knowing? Um, you know, they stumble sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they used to. Yeah. That's why we don't want you to go down there. Andrew. Well, I think it's more. Uh, well, in this one, I think it's more going for like a, like for the evils of the world. You know, like a watch out for a temptation using. Um, use the wisdom that I have given to you to um, to stay on the right path, even though it, it's going to be hard to do so. But with the, the parent thing, I think it's more of a, like, learn from the example of your parents. You don't want to always do exactly as they do. But using, using that wisdom for your parents I I mean, you know, because, you know, you can also use your parents as a sounding board. You know, is this a good idea? You know, and they, you, they can use their wisdom that they've accrued. And you all know what wisdom is, right? Okay, what is it? Um. Well, one of the collection of experiences and knowledge no, 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 no. Uh, gathered over time. Usually bad experiences. Yeah. Um, but yes. And, you know, I'm not going to say we've seen it all, but we've seen a great deal of it. And nothing really new is under the sun. You know, we talk about the adulterous dripping honey. Um, what about the person who wants. Oh, um, AJ, you got to try this new designer drug, man. It is cool. You know, you'll feel great. You know, it, it's a wonderful experience. No problems. Oh, boy. You'll get that. Yeah. Or, you know, hey, it's it's one, you know, one, it's, a, it's just a, a hit on a, on a joint. It's not going to hurt you. won't hurt you. You'll hear all these things. And. I hate to say it, but politicians, when they legalize marijuana, they're thinking of marijuana of the 1960s. Marijuana today is infinitely more powerful. It's more, it's a more highly concentrated THC content. So they're thinking, well, you know, I, you know, I used to smoke, you know, six fat dubs, and nothing happened to me, and yet, you know, they're sitting there and you can't do that today. Or you're going to end up, I guess, at the county. You know, or worse. The bad thing about marijuana that the police have, when you're driving intoxicated, they can't, they can't quantify it. You drink, and I can quantify your blood alcohol level. You cannot, you know, you can refuse the initial breathalyzer, but when they take you to have blood drawn, you can't refuse it. If you do, you lose your license. But people will force themselves and their opinions on you. One more drink, it's no big deal. What's one good? Say that don't get behind you. I mean, you know, and what the, what they want is your parents have built have built or helped you build a foundation on God. And the world is going to try to break that foundation and get you off that. Because misery loves company. They want you to join them. And that where their path leads is not a path that you want to go down. Okay. 
Chubbs, would you uh, take a shot? Reading it? Yeah. Keep your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house, for you will give your vigor to the others and your ears to the cruel one. And strangers will be filled with your strength, and your hard earned goods will go to the house of an alien. And, um, and you groan at your final end when your flesh and your body are consumed. Mm -hmm. And you say, Ah, oh, have I hated instruction, and my heart spurned reproof. I have not listened to the voice of my teachers. I'm inclined to my ear to my instruction. Flesh instructors. Okay. So. In view of what we uh, read earlier, how does this how does this help us? What does this do for us? Mm. What I see here is to stay away from evil, and it seems like someone has regret what they've done here. How many of you remember the story of David and Bathsheba? What was David's first, first mistake? Like the lust part of it? He went in. Um, what's happened before that? Right, yes, he did, but when we read Second King, First Kings, we read that in the time of the year when kings go to war, David's back home. David didn't leave Jerusalem. That was his first mistake. If he had been out with the army, he that, been that whole thing would have been avoided. The so he's sitting there on top of his roof, <laughs> and he looks down and he sees Bathsheba bathing. Yep. Now, was she enticing him? Yeah, the temptation. Is that, there, there, there's a there's a question there. You know, he obviously looked down with lust on her. Mm -hmm. Now, but she was complicit as well. And you see how, you know, this is what, uh, this is the problem I have with people say, well, I look at porn, but it doesn't hurt anything. Well, yeah, it does. It starts damaging the relationship between a man and a woman. It starts setting expectations that aren't real. It starts setting behaviors that are not healthy. And it also finances an industry that preys on children. You know, we've all, you know, I've all told you before that you know pornography is the biggest one of the biggest industries in the world today. Deeper to me too. Huh? It's deeper to me too. Yeah, I mean, you get all the, these um, OnlyFans accounts. I was listening to an interview to a person who has an OnlyFans account making two and a half million dollars a month. That's one person. You extrapolate that over the entire industry, you're talking probably close to a trillion dollars. And it pollutes everything it touches. Drugs the same way. Oh, the first hit is always free. Ha, huh. all right, yeah, that's right. But the drug dealer is going to sell you that first taste of the drug for free. He's going to give it to you, knowing that you'll come back for more. They knew it because that, that's like <coughs> making you want more. It's 
um, in sales, they, they teach you how to sell things. It's what they call the puppy dog clubs. We used to use it in business all the time in, when I was selling software. Here, try our software. We'll give you a 90-day trial, free of charge. We'll give you the tech support. We'll help you install it. We'll help you analyze the information. And about 30 to 45 days in, they're going like, we can't live without this. So this is a contract. 90% of the trials that I put out in software closed. Drug dealers in the same way. They put it out, boom. Because they know 90% of that market's going to come back for more. You know, and even if after the second one is still 90, you're still talking 81% of the people they initially talked to are now customers. You know, it's all that puppy dog clothes. Here, take the cute puppy home because I know you're not going to bring it back. There are many, many ways that sin will come at you in the world today. And they'll make it sound good. They'll make it sound wonderful. They'll make it sound like it's really part of the church. All right. We've all heard me talk about that guy with the pretty hair, right? You know who, we talk, who I'm talking about? I watched one of his sermons. Jesus was never mentioned. Not once? Not once. Oh my. Joel Olstein. Oh, that guy? Yeah. Yeah, he does he doesn't like he doesn't want to talk about him. Oh. And I mean it was like, okay. And I because I had somebody in my other congregation go, well, you know, he, you know, I really like the way he speaks. Well, yeah, because he's telling you what you want to hear. The world will tell you that. It won't be easy to say, you know, I have this foundation. I want to stay here. Yeah, so. Okay. Let's see, I don't think we've had you read today. Oh, no. Oh, God, I just, you know, I was up back up to level 400. <laughs> I was almost an utter ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. Drink water from your own cistern and fresh water from your own well. Should your springs be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets, let them be yours alone and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. As a loving hind and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times. Be exhilarated always with her love. Okay. Good question. You know what a hind is? Yes, that was a good guess. <laughs> what kind? Um, part of the reindeer? It's a, it's a deer. Okay. It's in the deer family. Okay. Now, what is this saying to us? Drink water from your own cistern and fresh water from your own well. Go straight from your wife. That's be part of it. Be, yeah. Be faithful. There's another. There's another piece in there that they're actually talking about is that don't lend money to friends and family because it is a huge temptation to to or it's a way that Satan will use to break relationships. So, what else does it tell us? So does that mean we can't lend money to our family and friends? Expect nothing in return. Do it. Good advice. You know, consider it a gift, a loss, however you want to look at it. But yep. Okay. All right. For why should you, my son, be ex uh, exhilarated with an adulteress and embrace the bosom of a foreigner? 
For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he watches all of his paths. His own iniquities, iniquities will capture the wicked, and he will be held with the cords of his sin. He will die for the lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he will go astray. Wow. Ways, other ways lead to the road to perdition. They lead to hell. In fact, if you take a look at it, a lot of our society is Satan-based. They take a teaching in the Bible and they convert it. We talked about the LGBTQ. I'm probably missing a letter or two. Okay, love is love. It's good to be, you know. It's good that two people love each other. It shouldn't matter that God says, you know, it's men and women are for marriage alone, not men and men. And but you're in the minority if you believe that. It's okay. People should be allowed to self-medicate in the way they do. But how much money is spent year, uh, yearly on drugs? Do I want to take a guess? Uh, illegal drugs? Illegal, illegal drugs. Oh, no. It's got to be uh, hundreds of billions of dollars. Yep. Yeah, we don't even know. But 20% of the U.S. population is addicted to one form or another of the illegal drugs. So, AJ, when you're sitting in class, I'm assuming they do sit in class now, and they don't do everything virtually. One in five of the people around you are drug users. And that's a normal population. You might actually hit spots where it's three and five. You probably have seen that in, in school. And I'll tell you, they can call you, in my opinion, they can call you uncool, they can call you whatever. I don't want to be associated with those big folks. I remember that. Because they're not there for you. They're there for them. They want to bring you down to their level. They want your money. It's a business. It don't, <laughs> it, no, what you say is very true. In fact, there are more people who deal drugs that know more about business than a lot of the college professors that teach business. Because they understand the fundamentals of the marketplace. They understand their product, they understand the demand. Mm -hmm. And they know how to sell it to people. Yeah. Oh, you know, AJ, you've been working, I'm sorry to pick on you, but you're, you're, you're entering college, so. You've been working so hard, you know, you're taking two honors classes, you're taking this, you know, these other classes. You know, I know you're having a hard time at night, you know, and, and you're back falling asleep. Here, take this. This will help you get through those study periods. Mm -hmm. Those words. And I mean it will come like that. And it will come from a person you consider a friend. I'm just saying beware. You know, it there are traps all over. Um, you'll hear people say, hey, I've got this deal that is a, it's a, uh, on the stock market. It's a sure bet. It's a sure bet that they're going to make money and you're not. You know, when we sit there and look at how things are presented to us, the devil is the best marketer in history. He makes bad sound good. Look what he did with 
Eve in the Garden of Eden. What did God say? Oh, I can't even touch it. Can't eat it. And he said, well, yeah. And he said, because you'll become like him. Well, yes, but Adam, what Eve forgot was she and Adam were made in God's image. They were already like him. But they wanted to be, they wanted to take God off the throne and they wanted to get up in, in his place. So Eve takes the fruit. She commits the sin of commission. Adam is sitting there like a dunderhead and doesn't protect his wife. His, he has the sin of omission. Because God told him, don't eat from that place. That's your one rule. One rule. One. Don't eat off that tree. Same thing with drugs and alcohol. Do we know how, how long were Adam and Eve in the garden before they fell? The Catholics would tell you nine days. I don't know where they get that, but I ran across that. Interesting stuff, huh? Way back, let's see, this is probably 2,200 years ago, 2,400 years ago. They have stuff that's still relevant today. So when Solomon said, when Solomon says nothing new under the sun, mm -hmm. pretty much it. You know, oh, they might not have the designer drugs. They might not have all the things that we have, but the temptations are still there to get money, to get power, to feel good. It's all about me. I'm the center of the universe. I'm the center of all this stuff. And I like being in the center. The devil's going, yeah, you deserve to be there. That's what you deserve. You should be there. You should be the master of your own destiny. You shouldn't let God allow you to tell you these things, what you can and cannot do. Because after all, it won't hurt you. Well, it does. Until, it, it doesn't hurt until you lose your soul. We're going to get in a new chapter. All right. Lee, would you... Uh, Grace us with uh, a reading. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll be a little slow here. Uh, my son, if you have become sh surety, is that surety? Mm, yep. Uh, for your neighbor, have given a pledge for a stranger. If you have been snared with the words of your mouth, have been caught with the words of your mouth, do this then, my son, and deliver yourself, since you have come into the land of your neighbor. Go. Yeah. What is it? Oh, hand of your neighbor. Uh, go humble yourself and, and importune, importune your neighbor. Uh, give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hunter's hand and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Okay. This is um, talking about putting up security for your neighbor. So what would have been security back in these times? What kind of security could I have offered to help my neighbor out? A uh, cloak? Possibly. Physical security? Like, if someone's attacking your neighbor, you help them? Yeah, but this is more of, of when you put something on. Like a like a uh, yeah financial security. Um, how about the land that had been partitioned for you? You know when the Israelites took possession of the promised land, the land was split on the tribe level and then split again at the family level. So every family had a plot of land.
Well, what happens if you pledge that land for your neighbor and he defaults? They didn't have bankruptcy back then. Take on that debt? Or at least help with that debt? To, or you take, you take on the debt or your property is taken as Three. collateral for the debt and you lose that. And that is a sin in, in Levi uh, Leviticus that if you put it up for certainty, it could last uh, for seven years and then it reverted back to you. But if you gave it up willingly, you didn't get it back. Because you could sell it. So you want to stay away from those situations. You want to stay away from um, places where you get nothing of value in return. It's like buying a, oh, finding a great deal on a ram and then finding out it doesn't fit your motherboard. Ooh, did, did we hit a... So how about helping our neighbor? So how does that uh, okay. reconcile? What we do is we help our neighbor to the extent possible. In, in this case, it was a stricture against don't give up the land that has been partitioned to you. Because if you gave it up, if you, if you wanted a loan for your property, that was fine. There were laws in that. But if you did it for your neighbor, all of a sudden things become blurred. It's that... that those protections that were in the law no longer apply. And it is, you can help your neighbor, but not to the extent of putting yourself and your family at risk. Um, you know, it's, uh, if you take a look at the prodigal son, he was the younger of the two. So he only got a third of the estate. Generally, we think, oh, 50-50. Now, the older son got double portion. But what they wanted is to ensure that everybody had the land. And this was, I'll be honest with you, part of it was self-serving, was that so they could support themselves. You know, Levitical law said that you didn't clear-cut your field. You left the edges so that the foreigners and the less fortunate could get food. It was like a built-in uh, welfare system. That's where uh, Ruth came into, you know, you see that, where that came into, into play. And I've got to head over to St. John's, so we will pick up chapter six next week. So why is it a, uh, why is it a sin to pledge your property pastor because they didn't want it to leave the family they want to keep the, the they, they wanted people to be able to grow their own food and not become a burden on on society so if you apply that to the, the recent events it's still a same pastor um no i mean if you out of your excess want to help your okay. neighbor you know that's fine there's no problem with that. Because that happens to me all the time. I mean, uh, most of the time. If I don't have money, I would have them loan my land, but they never get it back, so I'm always ended up paying it. Yeah. Well, you, you have, part of the problem is you can't do a one for one because the culture is different back then versus the culture now. They're agrarian, we're not. I mean, there, there are some things that come in there. We can discuss this next time. We can discuss it in more detail. Mine is agrarian, and they, once it's loaned to someone else, like for emergency, because in the buildings, they don't have money to go, like hospitalization and all that stuff. 
so i would have the